So I would like to talk a little bit about our last transformation piece on, uh, on these trig functions. And that is this, uh, this compression changing what's called the period. So we know that this is a, a, this is a periodic function sinusoidal. If I zoom out, it just keeps going forever, right? It just makes a, this makes a sine wave. Uh, we know that this starts in the middle here. And so notice I could, I could pick any uh, couple of points on this wave to talk about um, its period, how long it takes to start repeating itself. That's what the period is. So if I uh, just take a look, and let's say I start here at this zero, and it goes over, up, back down, and then here at two pi, it starts to repeat itself, which hopefully makes th sense if you think about what sine means in a full rotation of a circle. So notice here it's at the midline going up, it goes through its full cycle, hits the midline going up. So the period of this function, it's periodic, period is how long something takes to repeat itself, like a periodical, is 2 pi. And I, actually, I can measure that from anywhere. Like if I start at this, this crest right here at pi over 2, and I go all the way out to 5 pi over 2, that distance is also 2 pi. Notice you can go 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. So the period is just how long it takes to repeat itself. You can measure it from any any point along. You could like do it from here to here. It's just how long to repeat itself, to start repeating itself. So here's what I want you to notice. Uh, if I graph sine of 2x, there's my sine x, I'm going to pause it. Sine of 2x, uh, think for a sec, what's that going to look like? Uh, notice it's not x plus 2, it's times 2x. So it's going to do one of two things. It's going to like compress it in out or it's going to stretch it out in out. Now here's, here's the argument I'm going to make. This 2x is happening twice as fast, right? Like, like 2x is twice as fast as x. So this actually makes this happen twice as fast. It speeds it up. So this 2, we could think about it a couple of ways. One of them being um, it, it's happening twice as fast. And the other one, that there are two repeats in this function in the time that it takes this function to repeat. Do you see how this has two cycles? It repeats itself twice in there. So actually, the way that I can get the period of any function with the multiplier is I know the parent function is 2 pi. Well, how many times am I going through it? 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So this new function that's in black, notice that this amount of time for it to repeat itself from here to here, 0 to pi, is pi. And again, I could measure that from anywhere. I could measure that from, from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Uh, 3 pi over 2, that's this part, minus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2 which is pi, and I can see the period right there in it. So it takes two periods. If I did make this into a three, it takes three periods, three times to repeat itself in the amount of time that the parent function repeats itself. And notice that if I were to uh, think about what the period of this is then, the parent function is two pi. Since there's three of these in here, this is going to repeat itself in 2 pi over 3. Uh, in other words, I'm going to go back to the graph. It starts here, notice that 0, 0. Notice this, 2 pi over 3, this point right here, 0. Okay, so if multiplying by something bigger than 1 stretches it, what if we multiply by a fraction, like a half? Whoop, and that's not what I wanted to happen. Put some parentheses in here, 1 half, like that. And so by that same argument, I could say this gets through half of a period in the amount of time that the parent function gets all the way through a period. If I zoom out a little bit and turn off that parent function, you can see that this takes twice as long to get there. It gets out to 4 pi. And if I think about that with my um, idea that I can just do some division, my multiplier was 1 half. I can still think what's 2 pi divided by 1 half. 
And we talked about this a lot. What happens when you divide by a fraction? It's the same as multiplied by the reciprocal. Uh, so 4 pi is the amount of time this would take to repeat itself. So we have that idea of, uh, of period in here. So notice if I just throw a B in here, make a slider, as I make it bigger, it's going to compress it this way, make it happening, it's make it, making it happen faster. Or if I make this fractions, I'm making it happen slower. And then I know if I go negative, it flips it over and, and, and so on. And if this was cosine instead of sine, same sorts of things are going to be happening for me as well. So I have sine of x and I have sine of 2x. What I want you to notice is I'm taking sine of some value in both of these cases. Uh, x, 2x grows faster than x. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, if I run x through these values like 90, uh, 180, et cetera, uh, let's actually do 45, 90, and, and 180. This, as it just x goes around that circle, we can think that x is that angle and we're taking the sine of it. Sine's the height. Uh, 2x, notice 2x, when x is 0, 2x is 0. But when x is 45, 2x is 90. When x is 90, 2x is 180. Uh, or 360 when it's 180. So notice what's happening. 2x then is going to, like as x is getting bigger, we're taking sine of bigger and bigger numbers. Like when x is at 90, you know, here you're going sine of 90. But 2x, you've already done 90. You did it a while ago. You're now going sine of 180. Like you're, you're twice as far out. That's why it makes it happen faster. Uh, we could also think about like that's, that's why that makes it happen slower, slower, faster. And now one of the things that I've uh, talked about in class a little bit is this idea of pitch, um, how this is related to pitch. So I'm going to show you a little something in uh, Audacity about pitch. So I'm going to generate a tone on this. And I'll make it just 440, concert 440. That's the frequency. And notice that if I play it, not the most pleasant sound, but I can I can zoom in on this and you can see that that nice wave that's going on there. And now what one of the things I can do to this is I can change the I can change the pitch of the whole thing. So I'm gonna do that. And so notice that 440 is A, and I'm gonna let's make it just a little bit uh little bit lower. Let's make it a G. And notice it spread out like this. So let me put it back to where it was. And I'm going to generate another tone now. And I'll have them both in here together. And I'm going to make it 880. And so now that I'm going to zoom on in on here as well and if i play them together it actually sounds pretty crappy Ugh, terrible sound but if i play them individually so they see this top track this 440 i'm going to solo it so it mutes that track there's that one that we heard and i'm going to solo the uh the 880. it's actually an octave higher and one of the things that i want you to notice is that uh, let's see, like if I pick this up about here, notice that this is a full period. It starts to repeat itself. And what happens here? Two full periods in that amount of time. So basically this one has been multiplied by two, which condensed it, right? Like shrunk it because it's coming twice as fast at us. And tonally, that's twice as high. That doubles the pitch. All right, so let's take a look then at if I was going to graph cosine of 2 times x minus pi over 3. Now notice the way that this is written, that 2 has been factored out of both of those. Um, in order for these relationships I'm going to show you to hold it, it needs to be in this form. Like if this had been written as 2x minus 2 pi over 3, right, with the 2 distributed in, you, you can see the multiplier, but you can't see the shift easily. So we're going to write them this way so that we can see all the pieces. 
So notice two things are happening. Cosine, we know cosine starts at a maximum and goes like this. We know that that's our parent cosine shape. We also know that cosine, the parent, its period is, is 2 pi. So this is my multiplier, right? So that's making everything happen twice as fast. So those, those angles off my parent function Those are kind of the, those parent angles, right? Those, since they're happening faster, they'll be condensed. So just like where we, we add pi over 3, be, like opposite of what it says to do, we're going to divide by 2. So let's do that condensing first and then the shift. Multiplication, division first, then addition, subtraction. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. 0 divided by 2 gives me 0. Uh, pi over 2 divided by 2. Divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. I can just double all the denominators here. Pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and then 2 pi divided by pi is just pi. So notice that's just the, this, speeding it up. Now notice my, my period for this shape is 2 pi over 2 pi, right? It, it repeats itself every pi. Now the next thing I would do is that shift. We know that's going to shift it right pi over 3. So basically, I'm going to add pi over 3 to all those. So 0 plus pi over 3 is pi over 3. That's so nice that that shift, like since this has been a 0 the whole time, that shift shows up kind of as my, it's not really my first point, but the first identified point that I have. And as I go to add pi over 3 to all of these, this would be like 7 pi over 12, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 12. Uh, 4 pi over 3. And we've talked about um, how to do this sort of thing on your calculator or by hand as, as you need to. All right. So like if I were to sketch a graph of this now, notice I don't have anything happening uh, in this direction. So my midline's 1, my, my amplitude stretches 1. These now, pi over 3, 7 pi over 12, 5 pi over 6, Etc. Let me let me throw this into, into Desmos so we can kind of look at the points here. And I get pi just by typing pi. And so there it is. So uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit. And since it's cosine, it's been shifted. Like this is the point that's been shifted. Notice there's my pi over three, seven pi over twelve, five pi over six. Those are those values that I found here. And then if I if you were to draw this, midline's at zero, stretch is one, label those points like that, there's a good graph of it. Let's think about another one. I know that sine, uh, the parent looks like that, keeps going in every direction, but we just pick that piece of it. And so the period for sine is 2 pi, fall around the full circle before it starts to repeat itself. This one fourth is going to slow it down. So the period for this shape will, is going to be 2 pi divided by a fourth, which is 8 pi. It's going to take 8 pi for it to repeat itself. So what I'm, what's going on here is if I think about those parent, uh, that parent function graphing critical points, uh, angles, I'm going to take it and divide them all by 1 fourth. Divide by 1 fourth, which is the same as multiplying by 4. So 0. This divided by 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, is 2 pi. This would be 4 pi. This would be 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 pi. This makes sense. I thought the period was going to be 8 pi. Starts here, goes out to 8 pi. Just a little symmetry thing I want you to notice here. Uh, starts at 0, goes out to 8 pi before it starts repeating itself. Notice halfway is 4 pi. A quarter way is half of this, 2 pi. So this is going up by 2 pi, up by 2 pi, up by 2 pi, up by 2 pi. You can also get this first piece that way instead of doing the multiplication or division. Then we have a phase shift. Uh, this says plus pi, so I'm going to subtract pi from everything. So 0 minus pi, negative pi. Uh, 2 pi minus pi is pi. 3 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. And then again, I have my x values for my graphing negative pi, pi, 
3 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, those should be equal intervals. And then I would sketch my 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and label those points. Great. Okay, so we have this cosine. Here's a, a B. Let's call this an H. And so I know when B is 1, it's going to look like that. I know when B is getting bigger, it condenses. And I know that B is getting smaller, it expands. I know that H uh, is going to shift it. And I put that minus so the negative is like taken care of, right? Like this is moving to the right with it because I wrote this as minus. If I would written this as plus, since it does the opposite, it would move the opposite way as I'm moving it. I put that minus in there because it kind of shows the, the H value, that H shift. Okay, so let's think about um, going the other direction. If I, if I gave you a graph, how could we write a rule for it? Wow, look at that. Okay, a couple pieces. Um, first off, my first identified point is up here. That's screaming cosine to me. So I think that this is going to be, let's do the, the outside part of the function first. I think that's the easier part. Notice where the midline is at. Midline's y values, right? So the midline's at 5. Uh, plus, and then these distances, 5 to 7. I'm looking at the y values for this part is 2. So it's an amplitude of 2. So I've got that part. So I'm going to need two pieces for the inside part. Notice these parts out here came from y values. These parts in here are going to come from x values, which makes sense to me because x are inputs to cosine. That makes the shape, and then these affect the outputs, the y's, the height. So there's two pieces here. I'm going to need the multiplier, that b value, and I'm going to need the shift. Well, the shift is always right here for me because without a shift, that would be a zero. Notice it's been moved to the right, pi over 2, so I know this is going to have an x minus pi over 2 in it. I can, I can read that right off the first identified point. Now, what is the stretch? So what I'm going to want is the period of this thing. So let's see. This is at pi over 2, and it goes all the way to pi. So pi, if I want that distance, I can subtract pi minus pi over 2. So if I think about that, that's pi over 2. So the period of this is pi over 2. Well, here's what I know. This is going to go into 2 pi the, however many times this multiplier is. So I can, I can literally go 2 pi divided by pi over 2. Like that b value, what's there? We know that um, the period is 2 pi divided by b. You could do a little algebra, multiply both sides by b, divide by p. We can take 2 pi, divide it by the period that gives us this multiplier. So 2 pi divided by pi over 2, divide by a fraction, you invert and multiply, pi's go away, 2 times 2 is 4. And there it is. Great, let's do another one. Okay. Looks like it's starting in the middle going up, that's sign. Y values are going to give me information out here, X values are going to give me information in here. Um, so my midline is at a height of 2, so it's 2. And then from 2 up to 5 is 3, so plus 3, the amplitude is 3. And now you're done with y. Don't look at y's anymore. The rest of this is just x's. Now let's see, x. Uh, oh, and remember, that first identified point is my shift off 0. It's negative pi over 3. Without a shift, that would be a 0. It's been moved to the left, pi over 3. So plus pi over 3. And then the last thing I need is that multiplier b. So I need to know the period of this thing, how long it takes to repeat itself. No, starting in the middle going up, starting in the middle going up. 
So it gets out here to 20 pi, 23 pi over 3, and it came from negative pi over 3. So I'm going to subtract negative pi over 3, which is the same as adding. So 24 pi over 3. B. Oh, I just have to go 2 pi divided by it. So 2 pi divided by 24 pi oops, over 3. Invert and multiply. 2 pi times 3 over 24 pi is 6 pi over 24 pi. And if I uh, simplify that fraction, pi's go away. 6 into this is uh, 1 fourth. So that should be the equation for that one. And then I just got one more I want to do. There's no pi. So uh, notice if there's no pi on this, that's okay. It just means pi got divided out. We're still in radians. So let's start with what we know. And this is starting in an extreme. So I know it's cosine. But notice it's starting at a minimum, not a maximum. So there's going to be some subtraction here because that multiplier is going to get flipped. Midline. Distance of three. Two pieces here, the B value and the H value, right? The multiplier and the phase shift. So now we're done with Y's. Don't look at Y's anymore. That's a really common mistake that I see. Uh, so this first identified point is at negative 30. So we know it was shifted left 30. So this will be X plus 30. And then now let's think about the period. This is at negative 30, and it goes to negative 10. So if I think about how long that is, negative 10 minus negative 30, negative 10 plus 30, that's 20 long. So the period of this is 20. It takes 20 radians for it to repeat itself. And again, the way I can get that multiplier is I can just go 2 pi divided by 20. Boop, boop. My multiplier is pi over 10. So notice if there's a pi in my multiplier, there's not going to be pi's in my, in my x values because it's been divided out. All right, I want you now to give these a try. Uh, I, I, know that you, uh, I know that you can do them. So dig on in and uh, see what you can get done. Check Keith's work. And thanks for uh, paying attention.